Hey, it's Alicia, and welcome back to another conversation about something I call nervous system patterns. Today, we're gonna do a rewind and actually go back to the basics here because I want you to feel sure and clear that you understand exactly what a nervous system pattern is and how it originates because when you understand these two things, you can begin to identify and interrupt any pattern in your life that isn't serving you, even if it's not one that I've featured in this series. So first of all, nervous system patterns aren't bad. We all have nervous system patterns that allow us to walk, talk, get dressed, cook breakfast, and drive to work every day without having to really think about any of those things. Our biology, our physiology, and that nervous system memorize those actions for us to free us up to put our attention on other things to save energy. So learning actually uses a lot of energy, and if we had to relearn how to stand up walk or get dressed every day, we'd never leave the house. The human nervous system is amazing this way. It memorizes so many things for us. Our bodies, via various neurological functions, are able to actually sense in great nuance every experience we have, starting from day one, interpreting and ascribing meaning to all of those experiences we have in order to make sense of ourselves, our bodies, the people around us, our environment, and then our place among all of those things. We learn social behaviors subconsciously at the nervous, nervous system level. We learn practical skills like talking and riding a bike, again, at the nervous system level. Then we memorize useful patterns that help us move through life while expending as little energy as possible. However, most of us learn some ways of being and behaving that were very useful in childhood but become obstacles to the life we're actually trying to design for ourselves consciously in adulthood. Now I have something really important to mention in today's video that I actually haven't addressed yet in any of the other videos that involves the saying, nature abhors a vacuum. We're discovering of course that even vacuums and black holes are far from empty, but the point is if we want to delete something from our physiology or our subconscious psychology, we probably or maybe definitely need to replace it with something, otherwise, what takes its place. In my own life and those of my clients and students, I have never seen anyone change a pattern that they simply don't want anymore. We really need to replace the patterns we don't find useful with one or ones of our choosing, or chances are we'll just keep repeating those same patterns that we're, you know, resisting. You've probably heard the saying, what we resist persists. And also, what we choose to focus on expands. And this speaks to something I've shared in another video recently. We are far more powerful when we pursue the freedom to rather than freedom from. If you want freedom from certain nervous system patterns and you seek only to erase them, you're like a dog chasing its tail and you're likely to get stuck in a rut of repeating patterns on loops while hating that you do this. So instead of thinking about pursuing freedom from things you don't like. Instead, think about pursuing the freedom to, the freedom to run again, to hike, to have great relationships, to know what your purpose is, to trust people, to trust yourself, right? And there is actually one master pattern that I have adopted, which I will invite you to consider adopting at the end of this video. Because rather than trying to replace all of my different patterns with different replacements, I've chosen to prioritize one master key or pattern to the kind of life I want. And so far, it's working out really well. So what exactly is a nervous system pattern? Well, here's what I believe. When we encounter a specific trigger like the contagious power of groupthink or the choice between self-betrayal and speaking up or risking judgment or banishment from the tribe, it is really our body that recognizes those triggers first, and the body is the first to respond at the sensory level. This is why it usually happens below the level of our awareness, and we just act out the behaviors we've adopted that go along with the pattern. That's really how smart our bodies are. We sense something, that sensory perception is sent to the brain as a message, and the brain creates commands based on a database of previous life experiences 
and this leads to our automated behaviors. So remember me talking about the nervous system pattern of fear of rejection? You might be out and about and barely have time to register consciously that you find someone attractive because your body has already figured out that you might be tempted to commit suicide by rejection. And for people who have this pattern, I would be willing to bet that you've actually been totally unaware of the number of times you've encountered attractive people and maybe you've even convinced yourself that there aren't very many attractive people in the world because your body has done such a good job of keeping you safe from rejection. Now, our ability to sense other people and the world we live in is really mind boggling. Unfortunately, most people only sense the world unconsciously and are thus driven by those subconscious drivers that always prioritize safety and survival over risk-taking and thriving in life. Your mission, should you wish to live fully awake and consciously direct your life, is to engage with those very same senses consciously. And you will be amazed how much there is actually out there and in here to know about your body, your own psyche, other people, including their body and their psyche, and the world you live in. You can actually sense toxicity in your lymph system. You can sense when someone is trustworthy or not. You can sense anatomical variants that might make you prone to injury, and you can correct those issues before injury happens. You can sense when the food you're about to put in your mouth is, or maybe is, contaminated with bacteria that might make you sick. You can sense a bear in the woods behind you, but if you're anything like me, you might lack the sense in that nanosecond of decision-making not to step onto a slippery rock, fall, and twist your knee really badly. <laughs> we win some and we lose some. You can sense the difference between actual danger and your own nervous system punking you into thinking you're in danger when you really aren't. Your nervous system has just been triggered by one of those childhood experiences of not feeling safe physically, emotionally, or socially. When our bodies detect a familiar trigger, a physiological response is deployed as chemical messengers are sent to the brain that then cues us to behave in very specific and patterned ways. Maybe we behave by getting defensive in a hard conversation with a loved one. Maybe we silence ourselves. Maybe we dissociate. Maybe we go into fight mode because that's better than being a victim. Maybe we conform instead of standing out. Maybe we expect to feel hip pain, right? Because that's what we memorized at age 19 and continued to experience for 17 years after. So here's a bold statement from me. I believe we are actually evolving beyond the nervous system. I think humanity will eventually evolve to consciously create our physical experiences through something called eye consciousness and how it can control our water, blood, muscles, heart, lymph, fascia, etc., in addition to our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors. More and more of us are using our consciousness to direct our lives and our bodies in exceptional and maybe even miraculous ways. Wim Hof comes to mind, and if you haven't heard of him, maybe Google him. And this brings us to the master nervous system pattern I mentioned earlier, and that is, I believe we have the ability to live in a near constant state or perhaps a constant state of neuroplasticity. Very much like we did as children, except we're fully awake and we're conscious now as adults. This is the master pattern I'm adopting to replace all of my old nervous system patterns. I've invited myself to live in acceptance of uncertainty at all times in newness and novelty, in learning, curiosity, and play, reverence and revelry. And I've begun to believe that this is possible for myself this lifetime, to live as an adult with the neuroplasticity of a child, but also to retain what I've learned without allowing certainty to actually calcify my consciousness or my body. Revelry seems like the best word to describe this pattern, so I'm gonna describe that for you. <laughs> I revel in every sensation, even what people would call pain. I revel in every emotion. I revel in hearing birdsong every day as of hearing birdsong for the first time. I revel in the food I eat as if I'm tasting food for the first time. 
In this state of wonderment about the mystery of life, I am open to every possibility, which means I'm closed to nothing, which means I no longer need a single nervous system pattern to protect me from potential danger, except maybe, you know, a bear. Although I'd be willing to bet I wouldn't have taken that step into the river or twisted my knee if I'd simply reveled in making brief eye contact with a bear and then adjusted my nervous system to reverence and awe instead of fear and fight or flight in my case. So safety isn't really part of my vocabulary anymore unless I'm teaching about it. I don't really think seeking safety leads to thriving for any of us. No matter how traumatized we are at the nervous system level, I believe safety is for people who want to survive life. And I wanna live as fully and freely as I can while I'm here. So instead of seeking safety, I seek solitude. I seek presence or quiet, attunement, moments of peace, awe, stillness. Safety, for me anyway, has no place in those experiences. And please don't mistake this to mean that I've embraced stupidity or intend to jump off a cliff just to see how flying feels. That's not the kind of freedom that I'm referring to or revelry. I'm talking about the freedom to consciously direct our bodies and our lives. And through what I sense is possible for me this lifetime, I do believe humanity as a whole will eventually evolve beyond the nervous system altogether. When we no longer operate our bodies and our lives subconsciously, but instead do so fully conscious, I believe the nervous system will die. And this brings us to my final thoughts as we close out this series. I hope throughout this series that you've realized just how powerful our bodies are when it comes to dictating how we think, feel, and will or act in the world. Personally, I believe it's far faster to interrupt these patterns and create new ones by going through the body rather than the mind. Even though we're talking so much about subconscious psychology, the fact is these patterns were created mostly by our bodies when we were too young to think consciously like we can now as adults. So let me be clear. There are a lot of people out here um, online teaching mind over matter, how to change your body with your mind, teaching you to focus on your mind to create the body and life you love, right? And some of these well-intentioned people are suggesting that your body is lying to you. They literally use those words by giving you anxiety or the negative thought spirals or the chronic physical pain causing you untold suffering. So I've been compared to some of these other people and this always baffles me a bit and then horrifies me just a little bit because I really need to take pause and consider when that happens, how I'm actually delivering my message here. Because what I'm actually suggesting through all of this is that we honor what our bodies are telling us, that we honor what our brilliant, incredibly intelligent bodies have done to help us survive childhoods that were either less than ideal or perhaps totally abusive and traumatizing. I'm suggesting that we, our minds, get out of the way that we stop trying to think our way out of feelings and behaviors that were created honorably, intelligently, by a part of us that is wiser than our egoic monkey minds ever will be. When you honor your body for all the ways it helped you survive, and you offer gratitude to your body, and then choose to consciously create a new future together, you and your body will go into that future fully awake, senses lit up and turned on, able to know and understand so much more than anyone trying to use their minds to dominate their bodies. So in case this hasn't been clear, I believe that trying to change our nervous system patterns primarily through things like affirmations, positive thinking, mindfulness, meditation, even yoga, you know, decision-making, etc. It's really an uphill battle because physiology still rules us from a, from a survival standpoint. And it's not until we reject the idea of survival and consciously choose to live in the present moment at all times, no matter how uncomfortable or painful those moments may be, will we move beyond nervous system patterns. Only when we embrace pain as an important messenger and honor it as such, will we actually interrupt those nervous system patterns? So for now, this is how to think about changing your own nervous system patterns. When you change these physical neural pathways at the physical neural pathway level, 
you create change really fast. This is because you're going from the body, which is the way we sense ourselves, right? Sense ourselves, our bodies, and our world. You're going from the body and those senses back to the brain, which is how a nervous system pattern happens and is created in the first place. My personal philosophy on the human brain is that it's really a magnificent processing center, but it's not the driver of things. We are. We are at the sensory, physical level, and then also at the consciousness level. No one has actually proven that consciousness lives in the brain. The brain is part of the body, and the body houses the entirety of the brain's nervous system or sensory gathering apparatus, right? We have the central and peripheral nervous system, the enteric nervous system, the immune system, etc. So you can use movement, breath work, cold or hot immersion, anything physical is more efficient than trying to use your mind. But in my experience, there's nothing more potent than fascia release especially kinetics. I developed kinetics into a method that intentionally triggers nervous system patterns in order to rewire our bodies physiologically at that neural pathway level. And sometimes it does this very rapidly. So next week, I'm actually walking you through the fastest way to interrupt those old nervous system patterns you don't want and create the new ones that you do. And that will be our last episode in the series. So I hope to see you there.